What is going on guys? This is Mia Sin. So you might have heard of the new build of Labyrinth that is being played right now. It is the Unchained version. It looks like it's just a big engine, but it's only two cards. One monster and one shop card, but a lot of cards in the extra deck. And it does give this deck a lot of juice because you're going to be able to access a really big toolbox of Link monsters, which helps you break boards going second or establish bigger boards when you're going first. So today I will briefly cover a few combos as well as the deck profile. It's not going to be too long because... It's a trap deck, it's not like I have 65 combos to show. But before this video starts, you already know the drill. Friendly reminder to smash the like and subscribe button. And now let's get right into it. Alright, so combo number one, very simple. If you have like uh, Ariana and either Kuklok or Storvi, not the other one, the Chandra, it's not gonna work. You can uh, full combo pretty much. And uh, you're also going to be needing a discard for the Stovi, no shit. So yeah, normal summon the Ariana and then get your search for the missing card. And then Kuklok effect, and then the Store V, the, that order, otherwise it's not gonna work. And then Kuklok special summon itself, not to uh, add back to hand. And then you're gonna be going big welcome, summon the uh, lovely, I was gonna say REHM, so stupid. Bounce back the Ariana, which gets you a follow up, and then you're going to be going Chainlink 1, lovely, to destroy a card in your opponent's hand or field if you're going second. And then Chainlink 2, Store V to revive back. So now our opponent loses one card. And uh, at this point, we're at four summons. One was Ariana, two Kuklok, three Lovely, four Storvi. So if you're trying to play around Nib, you use the effect of Lovely first, get back a trap card, and then summon number five will be linking off into Yama. It's actually hilarious how you can unironically get nibbed in a trap deck and you're going for it. Hilarious. It's like altergeist and this. It's, uh, what is this game becoming? But yeah, anyways, you're going to have your big welcome face down and you're switching your um, Sharvara now, the red boy, basically. And you're going to be destroying that big welcome that you just set to summon that Sharvara and then link off into Unchained Soul of Rage using the Yama as well as the Sharvara. And the Sharvara is going to be setting the uh, Escape. I think that's the name. Yeah, Escape of the Unchained, which is kind of like the... Um, it's not the Icarus attack. Like whatever it is, but like pop one unchained and one card on the field, destroy both. Just want to re clarify that when it says destroy both, it's not destroy them, so it has to very specifically destroy the two cards. So if one of the targets leaves the field or isn't destroyed as a result, the other card is also not destroyed. Just got to make sure that you understand. But yeah, right now we have, I believe, that's uh, like what four interruptions in total. It was really easy to achieve, so obviously, we got to destroy a card with the lovely. We also have the graveyard effect of big welcome to bounce back a monster, and that's gonna tr trigger the lovely again to destroy another card upon his hand or a field so that's like an extra two interruptions just with like one monster and one card in the grave and then this is another interruption so you're gonna be linking off and then you have a pop preferably going to be summoning the link three unchained the anguish or something and then when it gets destroyed you get to recycle back something from the grave and the yama is going to banish itself to revive back your unchained soul of rage so you got uh, you got place for days actually Actually, it's way more than four interruptions. It's, um, yeah, one link off and then one pop and then two pops with this and then a bounce and potentially even a unicorn shuffle if you really want to. It's like five to six interruptions. Un completely unfair. But yeah, that's just it for combo number one. Let's get into combo number two now. All right, so combo number two is more of like an actual game and the kind of thing that might happen in real life. Uh, so my hand is interesting. I have Karma Cannon, which, by the way, should be in your deck if you're playing a trap deck. This card's insane. So freaking broken. Makes no sense. I'm gonna, uh, I already made a video on this, but I'm gonna talk about about it even more in the days to come. Uh, but yeah, Karma Cannon, the Labyrinth Field spell, Store V, Pot of Extravagance, and Sharvara. Not really good to draw, but it's not the end of the world, I'm not gonna cry about it. So yeah, draw phase or standby, you go for this. You don't want to use the Extravagance first because you might draw into the trap card and that's not really good. Draw phase or standby, use this. This obviously has to be at the start of your main phase, so you can't wait until your main phase to use the Store V. And then get your big welcome and also get your trap card. Even though we like, we discarded a card to get a card, we didn't really go neg one. And then main phase Extravagance, we're going to be getting hit by an Ash. Not the end of the world, I could care less because now I go field spell, set one pass. And that's all I need to win, honestly, because I have way more interruptions than you think. So obviously I'm going to be flipping this phase down, but we're not done yet because now we used a normal trap card that isn't a labyrinth card so we can revive back a fiend from the grave. The Sharvara is going to be reviving itself back and we got the escape from it. So this is already one pop and we also have big welcome and the field spell really interacts well. So now our opponent is going to be extending a little bit more, activate birth, normal summon the Fenrir, and then go big welcome, lovely, bounce back the Sharvara, destroy the Fenrir with the field spell, and then the lovely will be destroying a card in our opponent's hand. Chinlink 1, Chinlink 2, get back the Store V, and then destroy the Theosis, whatever, doesn't matter. And then I'm going to be going Sharvara, destroy the Store V preemptively, 
so that when my opponent goes birth, then I can flip the escape and I can destroy that card. And you already know that the follow-up in Unchained is, well, in Labyrinth, is completely game because I'm gonna have the lovely to get back a trap and it's just gonna snowball to like crazy advantage. So yeah, pretty sick deck and um, very, again, sick uh, engine because it's only two cards and a lot of cards in your extra deck. You can make Underworld Goddess, Access Code and stuff like that going second. It is completely cracked, but now let's get right into the deck profile. Alrighty, now for the deck list, I am playing, as you can see, a lot of hand shops, a decent amount. So 3 Nibiru, 3 Ash, 3 Imperm. It is the heavy furniture build. You can also choose to play less furnitures if you really want to. And I'm also playing 42 cards. You can reduce it to 40. I think at this point, it's just really preference. And I'm also showing this to give you an idea. Not necessarily the kind of thing that you should be copying. But for the most part, this is a decent deck list. As we get, like I said, 9 hand shops and then 2 Lady, 1 Lovely one Sharvara, three Ariana, and then nine of the Furniture Monsters, three Extravagance, this card is insane in this deck. Uh, you're also trying to play a lot of the different monsters so that you don't really risk banishing them. And by the way, uh, please, for the love of God, don't play Punishment in this deck, uh, because it's going to take up a lot of your extra deck space, and uh, the card's not really good right now. I mean, it destroys, and the Unchained deck doesn't care about getting destroyed, so yeah, it's not really fantastic. Extravagance getting you two cards is better than Prosperity only getting you, like, one high-quality card. Especially in the furniture build because you need a lot of cards to play because you're always discarding. So at least this card allows you to get your money back. But yeah, uh, to Welcome Labyrinth, the, or the original one is not as great as the big Welcome. This card triggers your lovely. It has a nasty graveyard effect. It's honestly just insane. And then one Ice Dragon's Prison. This card is extremely good against Unchained. And against a lot of decks, it's less good against Kashtira because they're going to have cards in the graveyard a little less often. But if you're, if you got a hand shop, you can use Ice Dragon's, actually, no, never mind. Uh, but, but still, yeah, yeah, I can't really think of, like, any psychic hand shops that they're going to be using against you. They, they don't play Ghost Ogre. But yeah, it's, it's a nice card against almost everyone. So yeah, I like Ice Dragon's Prison. And then one Karma Cannon, this card is insane against almost everyone. And it is your searchable out to Expert Le Noir. It makes monsters that are unaffected by card effects go to, you know, like, go to the graveyard by game mechanics. And it also flips everything face down. So when you use this card against Expert Le Noir, they kind of have to, like, do something about it, uh, which is really nice. So either they have to detach or start, like, spinning your cards, and then it actually goes face down and it's no longer unaffected by card effects. Or they don't do anything, they keep the materials, and then the card goes to the grave. So, yeah, insane card. And then, of course, for the Unchained cards, one, one Escape, one Sharvara, we talked about that. One Eradicator could be at your side instead of your main deck. One Deep Barrier, I mean, it's still good against Purely and a bunch of decks. Ironically, you can actually side deck this out very often because people might actually play Cross Out against you with Deep Barrier. I mean, people are ready now. And like I said, three Big Welcome and three Skill Drain, which you might not even need, honestly. You can play this deck as a full combo deck instead of like an actual trap heavy, you know, floodgate to death kind of deck. Anyways, the extra deck is um, pretty nasty. So Chaos Angel, relatively easy to summon, especially if you play, uh, well, Arias is coming out in Age of Overlord, but if you play like Bestials, you can use a Bestial with Ariana or uh, Lady or Lovely as well as the Store V. That's, uh, you know, you don't need a tuner monster. And that's uh, 8 plus 2 or 4 plus 6 equals 10. You get to banish a monster. And then all of your monsters are undestructible by battle. And this is a fiend, so once it goes to the grave, you can start reviving it back with the field spell every single time you use a normal trap card, which is pretty much an interruption because on special summon, not necessarily on synchro summon, you get to banish a card on the field. It does target, but still. This card is cracked, and also you can revive it back with Muckracker. It is insane. One Underworld Goddess, again, you're out to uh, monsters that are unaffected by card effects. One Unchained Abomination. When you are going for the combo of Yama into something, if you're going first, you're going into Soul of Rage, but if you're going second, you're going into Anguish, so that you can link off using your opponent's monster, and you can go into Abomination, destroy even more cards, or you can go into an Axis Code going second. It's just a little less realistic, but it's still really nice. It's just that finding the extra deck space is tight if you don't want to... <laughs> can't believe I'm saying that unironically, but it's not that it's tight. It's just that you're going to have to be a little riskier with Extravagance because you might have to play like only one copy of this or two copies of this. Not the end of the world, though. You can definitely like cut the third Yama for the one Axis Code. I mean, you realistically, you're only summoning these cards like once per duel max, but... You know, it's not even an unchained deck, it's just that Extravagance might make you really unlucky, so that's the, the reason why I'm just uh, panicking so much, man. But yeah, uh, one Unicorn, three Yama, two Soul of Rage, two Muckracker, and the Ling Rebo for the non-existing Ibli that nobody's playing right now. I don't get it, Bernard, why is nobody playing that card? I'm, I'm ready for it, though. Yeah, please, Ibli, lock me. 
I'm begging you. Anyways, <laughs> for the side deck, all right. So we got the one Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Just kidding. This is not a side deck. Okay, so you can um, side in Lord of the Heav Heavenly Prison going second against Unchained. It's really nice because, again, most of their interruptions destroy your cards or link off using your cards. So if you know what you're doing, you might actually um, have a good matchup against them. And also Lord of the Heavenly Prison protects all of the set cards on the field from being destroyed by card effects. And that includes your opponent's cards. So you can almost use Lord of the Heavenly Prison as an interruption against Unchained, which is really funny, you know? They're, they're trying to destroy their trap cards with Oraha and Sharvara, and it, it's just not gonna work, it's not gonna do anything. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind. You might all, almost want a main deck 3, honestly. I think you should. It's really that good, yeah. And it gets you more consistency. You get any spell or trap from your deck. You can get Extravagance or Skill Drain, even though it's not worth it because it will get banished on, t uh, like on your next turn or something like that. Uh, but if you have like Imperial Iron Wall, then it never gets banished because cards cannot be banished while it Iron Wall is on the field. Anyway, Sphere Mode for going second. Your normal summon doesn't matter too much. Worst case, if you draw like Ariana, you just discard it for one of your Labyrinth Furnitures. And then Lava Golem, same shit. Uh, the Bestial Monsters, not bad at all. Again, in this deck, it's even better because you get to make Chaos Angel with them. Uh, so yeah, they give you bodies. Uh, you can chain block with the Druid Worm and do some nice things. Uh, contact C, it's ass. I don't even know why it's there. I'm stupid. Access code, Gravekeeper's Inscription. This card's broken. If you're going first, even if they have like, you know, some board breakers like back removal, uh, this lingers. So they can't really do anything about it. So I really recommend side decking three copies of Gravekeeper's Inscription when you are going first against Unchained. It definitely uh, makes them uh, struggle big time. And then Cosmic Cyclone for the mirror... I don't even know why this is there. <laughs> I, I guess the mirror match going second when they have, like, a lady on the field. So you don't use any trap cards to, f like, you know, uh, make them gain advantage. Ah, that's, that's dumb, dumb. Uh, Call by the Grave for no reason at all. Evenly, the discard sucks, don't play it. Uh, deck Dev, it, it used to be good, but I don't think it is anymore. At least not with Unchained running around. Uh, but the Unchained cards will trigger... Uh, hold on a second. Do, do they trigger even when they're destroyed from hand? I just gotta double check. Um, <laughs> if this card on the field is destroyed by card effect... Hey, like that, like that. Oh, sheesh. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, so you know what? Yeah, Deck Dev on standby is actually not too bad. They will uh, lose uh, pretty much all their monsters. Uh, actually, not really. They keep the Abominable, Unchained Soul, Sharvara, and Shyama, even though it's... They can keep the Shiyama, you don't even want it to hit the graveyard, so that's actually a good thing for you. And uh, finally, we got Terrors of the Overroot, uh, always make, getting this mixed up with Underroot, it's not really the same thing. And um, Rivalry goes in match, or Solemn Judgment, and some uh, other, you know, nice floodgates that you could potentially play. Summon Limit is a decent one, you could definitely play that one as well. Um, that's it for this video, guys, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts about Labyrinth Unchained in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.